So the other day I was sewing and I was using my serger and I ran over a pin and I know that I should probably use clips when I'm using my serger. You know, these uh, little clips like these. I don't know what they're called, but these clips. So I know it's safer to use those when you're using your serger, but I love pins, so I have to get used to using the clips. And yeah, I ran over a pin. So once I first ran over the pin, I was like, oh my gosh. And I kept surging and it was still working. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. My surge is not broken, it's fine. So I was able to actually catch the pin before the serger got too deep into it. So I thought everything was okay. But then when I was sewing my last project, which was the cable knit outfit, I was, ooh, I was using my serger and I noticed a noise and it was just like, a banging noise so I was like oh man I think I actually do need to take my serger in so if you notice this empty spot right here that's where my serger used to be but I took it into the shop and they told me it's gonna be like approximately five weeks to get it back that seems like an awful long time and usually when they give me a long estimate it's usually a lot shorter than that, so I'm hoping that that'll be the case this time. So, needless to say, I don't have any items that I'm planning to sew. I don't know what I want to sew next. I kind of have an idea of a couple things that I'm interested in sewing, but nothing currently on the table. I don't have any fabric or anything. When I took up my um, serger, there was so much dust and junk under my serger. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a whole dirty mess under here. So I thought I would take the time now and just clean my sewing rooms since my machine is gone and I actually don't have anything to work on. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just tidying up my sewing room. It definitely needed it. I think there was something else I wanted to tell you guys. Oh, this candle. This candle. This candle is a candle I purchased from Target. And I was just in Target. I didn't know what I wanted. So I was like, I'll just try this. I had never tried it before. But I wanted to share it with you because I've burned it down quite a bit. And now that I've had a chance to kind of use it, I just wanted to share that I love this. It's called Palm Springs Oasis and it's by Opal House and it looks like this. And I want to go back to Target and get another one and maybe see if they have any other scents. I would light it and then when I would come into the room, if I left to use the restroom or something, I could smell it. And I was like, oh, I love that. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. I realized that I needed a couple of things from the store. So I headed to Target and my first thing was picking up some more wood cleaner. Then I needed some dry erase markers. Then I decided to head over to the candle section to see if I can pick up another candle similar to the one that I had in my room already. I smelled a couple scents and there were a few that didn't really appeal to me, but I kept trying different scents and I did end up finding one that I really liked. It's called Watermelon Margarita. And it smells really nice. So this is the one that I finally decided to take home with me. My next stop was Hobby Lobby. I sat down to look through their latest McCall's catalog. I didn't purchase any McCall's patterns, but I did find one new look pattern that I did pick up. You will not believe what I bought. <laughs> I bought some microfiber cloth fabric. It was on clearance for $3 a yard. This looks like and feels like a bath towel. And it's actually like the same microfiber cloth that I have used to like clean up, clean up dust even actually. But 
for three dollars a yard and it's nice and soft i thought that this would make like a really cute bathing suit cover-up dress so when I sat down to look through the catalogs, that's what I had in mind. I was thinking of a pattern that would work really great with this fabric. So I looked through McCall's and then I looked through New Look and I decided to pick up New Look 6550. And I want to make like one of the shorter views with the shorter sleeves. And I did buy some extra fabric because I do want to lengthen the dress a little bit. The finished measurements say that the dress goes down to about 31 or 32 inches. So I want to lengthen it a little bit and make it a little longer than that. So that's my plan. I actually have something to work on now and I'm excited. I can't wear it this year, but I'll definitely have this in my closet next year. So if I go on vacation or something, I can just pull this out, pack it up and take it with me. The pattern comes in U.S. sizes 8 to 20 and it says it's $6.59 on here but it rang up for a little over $4 and some change. I think I'm going to just cut out view C which is this longer view here and then I'll just fold up the pattern piece to get it to the length that I want the dress to actually be. View C uses five pattern pieces and I'm thinking I may not add any elastic to the middle I'll just see how I feel when I get to that point I have pieces of this microfiber cloth all over my tables my floors and everything but I did cut out all the pieces and I did decide to lengthen the bodice by one inch and then I lengthen the sleeves by two inches I'm pinning the sides of the bodice together this is a 2018 pattern and I did cut out a size 8 there is elastic in the neckline area along with elastic in the waist area, of course. I mentioned that earlier. And then there are also gathers in the waist area. I just pinned the sleeve into the armhole on both sides and I'm going to go ahead and stitch the sleeves on. The next thing that I'm going to do is to fold this over to make a casing for the elastic to go through. And I did use some wash away tape just to fold this edge in so it will be nice and neat. So here is the top with the elastic around the neck edge and then I just pinned the sides of the skirt. I also put in the gathering stitches here. So I'm going to sew the sides pull up the gathering stitches and then attach the top to the skirt. I am literally wearing a bath towel as a dress, but I actually really, really love it. It reminds me of something you will wear at a spa or maybe something you will wear when you're getting out of the bathtub or out of the shower. You could just throw this on. So I actually really, really like it. For the white dress, I decided not to put the elastic that goes between the bodice and the skirt. I just left that off. This is my outfit for the day. This is Berta 6414, which is a dress I made a while ago. And I'm about to go shopping. I think I'm just going to go to the thrift store to see if I can find some fabric. So I didn't find any fabric at the thrift store. So I decided to drive over to Joann's and I'm still sitting in the parking lot because I wanted to share with you what I found. So I had this netted fabric that I've been carrying in my car for a while and I finally found some knit that I think will match with it pretty well and I want to use this for sleeves and maybe in the shoulder area of this top that I'm thinking about and as I was looking through this fabric I was like okay when I'm sewing this I have a feeling since these holes are pretty big that the needle is going to go right through the holes. So I started thinking that maybe I need some type of stabilizer. So I decided to pick up this self adhesive tear away stabilizer. So I've never used this before but on the front it says it's great for knits. So what I'm planning to do is just stick this down on the seam and then stitch the seam and then tear the paper away and then I think that should work. So that's my plan. So I'm going to be using Simplicity 9645. I want to make view A here 
and I want the green mesh to be in this area here which is the shoulder and then of course the sleeves and I'm also thinking of adding a kangaroo pocket to the front and I also want to straighten out the hem because it is curved. I'm actually taping the hem down to some tracing paper and then I'm going to just take this ruler here and I'm going to measure across and draw a line. I'm gonna make sure this is on a straight line. Let me move my paper down. So I'm going to line the ruler up with one of the lines here on the mat to make sure that it's straight. And then I'm going to just draw across and that's gonna be my new hemline. And I'll do the same thing on the other piece. Oh shoot, my paper is not long enough. Let me add some more paper on here. And the reason why I'm straightening out this edge here is because I want to put some elastic in the hem area. And I think it will be much easier to do if the hem is not curved. So I'm gonna stretch that down and go across here. Okay. Then I will cut this out and my hem will be straight now instead of curved. So, one down and one to go. I sewed the yoke front pieces to the front of the top and I didn't have to use any stabilizer for this section because I was sewing this mesh or this fabric here to a solid piece so it worked out just fine. I did make sure to use a walking foot. I also used a straight stitch. I thought about using a zigzag but the straight stitch worked out okay. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for the back. I like this stabilizer because it has lines on the back. So I measured across the length that I needed. And so I was able to cut two strips of stabilizer about the same width and length. And I'm just using a pen to kind of separate the sticky tape from the paper like this. And then I'm just going to stick it right here on the edge. So it looks like I'm only going to need stabilizer when I'm sewing mesh to mesh. And I'm calling this mesh, I think it's mesh. Okay, so now I will just hold this together and stitch it down. I don't know if I can pin through this, let me see. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, perfect. So this should make it much easier to stitch everything down and then pull the paper apart when I'm done stitching. And we'll see how that looks. I need to straighten this out. Okay, I already put the tape on the other side but I haven't pinned it yet. There we go. Okay, so now I can just go and stitch this. So here is the stabilizer sandwiched in between the fabric. So I think I'm going to lift it up, pull this sticky part off. Let's see if it comes off easily. Okay. 
Not bad. It's coming off. Let's see. So this is one side. Then I will flip it over and find a part that I can pull. There we go. Okay, it's coming off easily. There we go. So now, ugh, there's the finished seam. So I can trim this down to neaten it up because you can see it from this side. So I may do that, I'm not sure. I may just leave it, I don't know. But at least I know the stabilizer worked. The sleeve area here is gathered, but I'm not even going to try to attempt to gather this fabric because it has so many holes in it. So what I did is I measured around this armhole opening and then I found a pattern, another knit pattern that doesn't call for any gathers, which happens to be Simplicity 1325. I just picked this randomly and I measured around the top edge to see if it will fit. And I believe it will fit just fine. So I'm going to use this for my sleeves. And then for the kangaroo pocket on the front, I think I'm going to just use the pocket here in this pattern, which is McCall's 7061 and the kangaroo pattern piece, pocket pattern piece looks like this. But I'm going to cut out the sleeves first and see if I even have enough fabric left over for the pocket. I did have enough fabric to cut out the pocket and I'm using wash away tape to finish the edges so that I can stitch everything down. And I already peeled the backing off and then I'm going to fold this over and then stick it to itself and then I can stitch it down. I have the edge taped down and now I will stitch it. And then when I wash this garment, that white tape will go away because this is wash away tape. The sleeves went in just fine. I do have the pocket on and now all that's left is putting the elastic in the hem area. Oh my goodness y'all, I am craving spaghetti. It's what, 8.30 in the morning? I'm already thinking about what I wanna eat for lunch, but I might be making some spaghetti because that is on my mind. I wanted to share with you all that I washed the top and all of the wash away tape that I had in here came out so I like that. And speaking of wash away tape, when I was peeling away the stabilizer, some of the stabilizer wasn't as easy to get out. So I started looking up stabilizers and I found out about this one stabilizer. I wrote it down. It's called Sticky Fabri Solvi and it works the same way. So you peel and stick it down. But the thing about it that I think is great is that you throw it in the washing machine and you don't have to worry about pulling it out of the seam when you're done. I was like, oh my gosh, that would have been such a time saver. So I went on Amazon Ooh. and I ordered some and it should be here tomorrow. So I just wanted to have it. I also think that this sticky tape would be a great product to use on fabrics that kind of shed or move a lot, like maybe fur or Sherpa even. Something that you can use to keep the fabric, you know, kind of still while you sew over it. I'm so excited to have learned about stabilizer. I think a lot of people use it for embroidery. That's what I learned when I was looking it up, but I don't embroider. So this was a new product for me. So I will put some links in the description to some of these stabilizers if you're interested. And now I actually need to go ahead and put this top on so I can show you what it looks like. I am so happy that I was finally able to find some fabric that matched this mesh because I had been driving around with this mesh fabric in my car for a while just looking for something that I wanted to use. Here is the front pocket and the elastic in the hem area.